Hello, my name is Antoine Craigwell. I am president and CEO of DBGM, which is an organization that is concerned about raising awareness about mental health impacting black gay men to prevent their suicide. Uh, DBGM, which is uh, so far me, have been present, um, were present in the network, in this LGBT network since about 2017. So it's pretty recent. Um, and I've participated in all of the retreats and the technical assistance um, conferences and all of the committees and so forth that I have been, that I've been part of in a way, not just to fulfill the requirements of my membership to the network, but more importantly, to contribute uh, to the growth and the development of the network to ensure that LGBT people of color needs particularly are being addressed. And it is for that reason that I am continuing my presentation or my commentary um, from Wednesday's, the end of Wednesday's retreat. I think as JR said in the chat during the time when um, one of the network admins interrupted was that I was being silenced. So I'm choosing this opportunity now to talk with you about some of the issues that I wanted to bring up in the network and in that network retreat. Um, contrary to what someone else said on Wednesday afternoon, that the way that the retreats and the, the meetings are always choreographed or scripted, there aren't very many opportunities to discuss openly issues and things that are bothering people or may upset other people. And there is, and they, it is, it is seemingly employed to use a British colonialist mentality of divide and conquer, of isolate. Let's deal with the situation and see how we can how we can come back, rather than have a conversation openly. And I think that may be often for fear, because a lot of people may feel that they are provoked, or that they um, it brings back memories of of violence or abuse. So I actually will not use that word trigger because I think the word trigger is particularly violent, but I would rather use a word like provoke instead. I wanted to continue my comments about the retreat. And first of all, to identify where is the strategic plan that the conference, that this retreat was talking that it would address. What were the updates in the strategic plan for the network that were formulated at the 2019 retreat at, at, Hudson, at the Hudson Valley Hotel? What were the updates from the 2020 retreat? So the absence to me in a clear direction or a clear focus presents a problem for the network. Secondly, when we consider the environment and the times that we live in, it was particularly insulting, glaringly insulting and disrespectful to people of color communities that this retreat, that this retreat that we just ended on Wednesday did not address and address or discuss or even memorialize the members of our communities who have died from suicide, homicide, or that we've lost to COVID. We have not discussed how racism is present in the, in the network. We have not discussed that there seems to be a lacking in transparency in the network and accountability. We don't seem to be able to think about things outside of our own individual silos. And I would have thought that as a network, we're coming together to formulate as a body how we can all respond together. So for example, the network did not put out a statement with respect to George Floyd's murder last year. And did you realize that on Tuesday afternoon when we ended, between Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday afternoon, three people, three black people, including a 16 year old black girl, were shot and killed, were shot and killed by the police. But yet 
this network has not really addressed or even put out a statement about what black lives, what racism means, and how racism impacts LGBT communities, especially LGBT people of color communities. It is interesting too to notice, and for the mental health professionals in this network, that the APA, the American Psychological Association, and the American Psychiatric Association have both issued statements condemning and, and, and accepting their role in perpetuating racism in psychiatry and psychology. But yet, this network has not seen fit to publish a statement about racism. Let us stop for a minute and consider how LGBT people of color in this network are going to be affected by ongoing acts of nature that are as a result of climate change. How are our members going to be affected by access to food, food insecurity, water, water security, water availability, access to housing, displacement, dispossession? How these things impact not just their practical physical lives, but also their mental health? Have we had a conversation about that? This is a direction that I feel that the network needs to embrace. The network has been able to come together as a body and represent and leverage its power to get things done. I recall that, the, that, that this network, I called on this network a few years ago to step up to ensure that the OMH included LGBT voices at their suicide prevention conference. And the network as a body came step forward and got that and got that change did does do the network members know that there's a 988 implementation bill um plan that is going to be rolled out in new york state that does not demonstrate or show any lgbt least of all lgbt people of color inclusivity in how this implementation is being rolled out can the network step up and take a role in ensuring that lgbt voices and lgbt people of color voices thanks to the Trevor Project for their 2019 and 2020 reports on mental health in impacting LGBT people of color, can the network step up and take an active role to ensure that the new 988 facility for suicide preventive suicide hotline represents and includes LGBT voices? So these are some of the things I think that the network needs to focus on. The retreat that we just, that just concluded on Wednesday was inappropriate. I don't fault Cecilia for her presentation. It was enjoyable, it was fun. It made us think about a couple of different things. But like I said on Wednesday, I do not believe and I do not feel that it was appropriate to focus three days on simply transgender issues. Yes, I agree with Cecilia that many transgender have felt oppressed and victimized by other LGBT. But where were the transgender people of color in her presentation? Where were the transgender males presentation in her in presence in her presentation? Where were other lesbians, many of whom struggle with cancer, many of whom struggle with other health issues and mental health issues? Where were black and other LGBT um, gay men? Where were bis the bisexual community? Why weren't these included in this in, in the retreat planning? I saw that at the end of the thank you that Sierra sent out, and, and, and I want to be able to be very clear about this. I know what it takes to put together a, a, a three-day forum. I've been planning a two-day conference now for seven years. Actually, this is our seventh year, and it's going to be virtual. And as a quick aside, I have not over the several years that I've been part of this network seen network members participate or attend the, the, the In My Mind conference, least of all, submit an abstract to present. But I'll deal with that as a separate issue in a moment. But I want to be able to really and truly, honestly, congratulate Vlad and Sierra and Corey, who pulled and pushed and did all they can could to make this retreat a success. It was a success. 
no mistaking that but i want to be able to understand that this retreat could have done a lot more i want to understand who we did not see in this retreat who are the network advisory board members who are the people in the network that make the decisions about the network why didn't we see them why didn't they step forward and introduce themselves second let's talk about the network advisory board how many are members who are white how many are members who are black and how many are other people of color when we look at the beginning for each day that was a meditation vlad issued a call for recommendations at the last combined meeting i recommended an indian and a an indo guyanese lesbian who is a pandita a hindu priestess i was surprised to see that she wasn't included in the program why what happened was there a breakdown in communication did she not respond fast enough or wasn't there a follow up with her to include her to provide the meditation for the for the retreat or was it racist that she was not contacted because she's a dark skinned woman so we need to ask questions about racism openly and honestly in the network if this network is going to function beyond just simply being a white people's club with some black people attending just just to make up diversity and inclusion then it's not going it's going to be just as bad as empire pride state agenda which which collapsed now let's talk about how white privilege is exercised and bullying and demonstrated in this network in 2019 i expressed i was sharing about uh, a subject that was being um, facilitated by Trevon who's no longer with with the center i understand and may me no longer be connected with the network and i was interrupted and demanded that i provide my pronouns at the time i responded by saying i don't do pronouns the person who was seated at a table where i was then took offense to that complained to Corey who then called me outside to to berate me and to dress me down about how people are feeling triggered how people are feeling attacked because i don't want to use a pronoun have we considered one the white privilege of that transgender male who can say that he or they need to be able to have a pronoun and that everybody must conform to that have we considered that the entire construct of using pronouns as forms of identification are in some ways also oppressive and also discriminatory have we considered the effect that it has on those who do who who are being forced to conform at the expense of exclusion and isn't that what we're trying to get away from but yet we perpetuate it so on wednesday afternoon when that white transgender male objected to my commentary saying about dropping bombs yes i will continue to drop bombs in the network i will continue to disrupt the network because the network needs to be reformed the network needs to be a lot more inclusive the network needs to be more representative and not just by black and people of color who are working with organizations so they are afraid to comment or to take a stand because of how it's going to reflect on their organization the network needs to represent as an entire entity that demonstrates that they are there to look out for lgbt people across the state regardless of their white black or other people and people of color I raised and asked a question about funding. One of the things that I find particularly troubling is that when I joined the network I became aware of the requirements to be able to be eligible for funding from New York State through the AIDS Institute. 
And I remember at one of uh, one technical assistance retreat, there was a, a contentious debate about the requirements and how they must be applied. So we finally settled down to that. But I don't recall ever being told that any qualification would necessarily be dependent on an organization having a contract with the AIDS Institute to be able to get the funding disbursed when they qualify. And that this funding is reimbursable. That is particularly problematic for small organizations who would be glad for that $10,000. But how are we going to be able to put out the capital when we don't have the capital then to apply for reimbursement? What are they? What are the, 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 the qualifications or the established standards for reimbursement? We don't know that. Why should we have a contract? Yes, I can hear you say that it's the state Senate and it's the state who has determined what are the requirements and the criteria. But was when the state was doing its consultation, was there any, any push, any, any resistance? Was there any efforts to, to, to say, we are dealing with small communities, we are dealing with small organizations who are doing great work, who are doing important work in our communities. And they, they do not have those kind of resources. I think that the issue of the direction of the network needs to travel, needs to go, needs to be expanded. The, that this, this network needs to be a lot more transparent. This network needs to be a lot more open and accountable. And this network needs to be a lot more focused, considering the times we are in. It is particularly troubling that the network chose not to include in any of the three days of this discussion about racism, about black lives, about climate change. It is particularly troubling. One of the conversations that I would have appreciated in this, in, in this retreat was is, is hearing discussion about transgender people of color, the violence and, 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 and attacks against transgender people of color. How can we mitigate that? How can we work with and assist our transgender brothers and sisters and, and community members who are subject to or to allow or to encourage them to de-escalate if they get into a situation that may lead to violence? These are conversations we need to have. These are conversations we need to address as a network. But are we only going to focus on white transgender? Are we only going to focus on white LGBT issues and marginally or barely mention black, black and people of color? So these are just some of my thoughts that I wanted to comment on the direction of the of this retreat thank you